Good morning. What it do, everybody? Come on in. We're leveling up today. You ready? You ready to level up? Come on in, everyone. What it do, everyone? What it do? It's Friday morning. We're here with your unfiltered chat. We're leveling up, guys. Share this. You ready to level up today? I've got a word for you. I'm sharing some good stuff. So go ahead and share it. Come on in. What's up, everybody? Good morning, good morning. Hey, Heather. Hey, TJ, what's up? Omaha, Nebraska, in the house. Cheers to that. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Share this. We're fixing to have an unfiltered chat. All about the stuff. All about seasons. What does it look like to steward your season? Hey, Ashley, what's up, everyone? Come on in. You know the drill. Throw those coffee cups up if you are ready for it today. We are leveling up this Friday morning. Are you ready for it? Hey, Brenda, what's up? What's up? I'm excited today, guys. I have been um, praying and trying to just get some clarity on what it is that I want to share today. Um, I want you guys to come on in. I want you to hit that share button. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for an unfiltered chat? Maybe you don't know who I am. I'm Alyssa Holt. We come on here every Wednesday and Friday at 1030 a.m. to cheers to the dirt in our life. Yes, honey, that's what we talk about. We talk about all the stuff, all the dirt, all the things that nobody wants to talk about because we are about being unfiltered on this page. Um, if you don't know, I wrote a book called Unfiltered, so I pride myself in talking about all the stuff that most people wouldn't want to talk about in the confessions right here that are shared on Wednesdays and Fridays are to help each other grab each other's hands and get through life together. I see the coffee cups being thrown in the air. I hope you guys are ready for some encouragement today. Drop me emoji down below. Let me know how you are feeling today. How are you feeling, guys? Like, I really want to hear from you. How are you feeling this week? How are you showing up for this week? How are you showing up today? Because we're going to be talking about um, how to steward your season. That's what we're talking about today. That's something that we all need to understand, especially right now with unprecedented times. We're navigating uncharted territories. We're navigating life together Hello, we're not alone in a way that we've never navigated life before. My audio book will be out next week. We are working some kinks out with that. There were some other requirements that we had to figure out. So next week I will be posting a post to let you know when the audio book is available. If you haven't shared this, go ahead and share it. You started off a little rocky. Well, that's okay because guess what? I am here to encourage you today guys hit that share button comment below that you shared um i'm really excited to kind of just uh, share some dirt with you today man i never thought i would say that i never thought i would be the one to get on a live broadcast and share my insecurities and my flaws and my failures and all of the stuff um I told you guys Wednesday that we have been struggling. Hey, everybody. Good morning. I hope you are here for it today. I hope you're sharing, showing up for your weekend and that you're sharing this broadcast. But the past couple of weeks, I've been struggling. I have been struggling with the whole COVID thing. I've been struggling with, um, you know, just the world being shut down and not being able to do what we do best, which is travel and share the gospel and um, worship with people and be able to get together with others and write songs and do ministry and being stuck in a place of um, this forced pause that I talked about Wednesday has been very difficult for me. And I want to talk today. I want to ask us this question. And I see your comments right now. Um, 
kind of hating life this last week and I've been there. Can we just cheers to that? Have any of you been there lately? Hey, everybody. Good morning. Blessings, blessings. Have you been there lately? Have you felt like you just hate life? Have you felt like, and I'm genuinely asking this because me and Brandon have been there in the past couple weeks. Cheers to it. Let's just talk about it. Hating life lately, hating the season that we're in, hating the way that 2020 has looked. Um, We went into 2020 with full calendars. We went into 2020 with conferences that we were supposed to speak at and concerts we were supposed to do. And um, we were supposed to be worshiping with teenagers, thousands of teenagers throughout the summer. And um, just being able to love people back to life and pour purpose into people who are in pain and lock arms with people who are broken. And we were so excited about what this year was going to bring. And then bam, COVID hit, right? And our entire world stopped and I have been in this place of hating life I see the coffee cups right now if you've been there hashtag me too down below let us know we're not the only ones hating life at the moment or have been hating life somewhere during the quarantine time and um, if you're not a incredibly big loner Um, being stuck inside of a house is not easy if you're not completely introverted being stuck inside is so hard um, to be isolated from people. And so I want to talk about this. Let me ask you a question this morning. I don't want to be long. What are these chats about? It's about me encouraging you to show up for your life. Um, The dirt in your life, like I say, um, dirt could be the issue you've been dealing with, the divorce you're facing, um, the suicidal thoughts you can't get over, the mental pressure that you're feeling, the burden that you've been carrying, the finances that you can't get in order, whatever it is, the dirt in your life is not what's keeping you from destiny. Destiny might be that dream that you have. It may be the vision you have for your life. It may be the strategy that you've been trying to lay out to get you where you need to go and where you want to go. Destiny could be the promise for your life, the call, as as we say in church, the call for your life. That's what destiny can be. The dirt in your life, the things you are struggling with are not what's keeping you from destiny. Your decision to stay where you are is what's keeping you from destiny. Do you hear me? And so this is the question I want to ask you today. If you're ready for it, give me a heart party. Um, I want you to hear this. How are you stewarding this season? How are you stewarding this season? Because seeds will grow from this season right now. How are you stewarding this season right now, this forced pause right now? Are you just sitting around if you're not an essential worker and have been out of a job? Me and Brandon have been out of a job for months and months now. We have been unable to do what we do. We have had no paychecks coming in. We have been trusting God, believing God, standing in the gap, having faith. Do you know how hard it is to continue to get out of bed and encourage yourself when you've got no income? Do you know how hard it is to get out of bed and encourage yourself to still show up for life, show up for your kids, show up for yourself when it is real easy to get depressed because your entire source of income stopped just like that and has been gone for months and you're believing God and you're you're standing in faith and you're saying, okay, God, you knew this would come even when I didn't see it, so I know you're going to provide. If you have been there, if you are in that place right now, let me know that I'm not alone because that would be great. Um, I know a lot of our friends who have been dealing with this same issue because when you travel and you rely on um, a traveling schedule to bring forth income in ministry and you don't got a church that you're pastoring um, or whatever that may look like and you're not an essential worker, Um, It's very difficult right now to get really discouraged. And I don't know where you're at. It might not have anything to do with COVID. Can I just say that however you are stewarding your season right now, there will be seeds that are planted and a harvest will grow from it. So it could be, um, it could be 
you just being depressed and you just can't get over depression. It could be your marriage falling apart. It could be you not knowing how to provide for your kids. It could be your finances. It could be the fact that you keep on trying to step out to do that business endeavor and everything keeps crashing. It could be that you wrote a book and you're trying to find someone to publish it and you can't and it keeps falling through the cracks. It could be that you're um, trying to write music and something keeps messing up. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is. Is how you steward this season right now is going to cause seeds to grow. And so I want to talk about this because I uh, I came across a video um, today. You know, you have these time hop videos where it shows you what you were doing years previous on Facebook. And I came across this video today where I did an encouragement video three years ago today, the week that my divorce was um, filed three years ago today, and um, my whole life was crashing down around me. My whole life was crashing down around me um, three years ago this week. And I look at my life and I see seasons where I decided to steward the season correctly in order to see growth. And I got on live and um, even though divorce would be filed that week, I still got online and you know what I said and I want to encourage you with it because it encouraged me this morning as we're going through a totally different obstacle with life pausing. Um, I said that life may not be what you expect, but it doesn't have to be what you accept. Do you hear me? Somebody needs to type that down below right now. Say that out loud. Say life might not be what I expect, but it doesn't have to be what I accept. Just because your life isn't turning out like you thought it should, just because things look different, just because you didn't see that coming, doesn't mean you have to accept it as yours. Doesn't mean that you say, you know what? Oh my gosh, COVID has happened. My paychecks have shut down. My ministry has shut down. So I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to make a bed out of this broken place. I'm going to make a bed out of this pain. I'm going to make a bed out of this issue. And I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to wallow in self-pity. No, life may not be what you expected, but it doesn't have to be what you accept. And if you make a decision today to steward your season, do you hear me? I'm looking at somebody right now who's sitting in depression. I am looking at somebody right now who has been sitting in their pain for far too long. And I am telling you right now, get up off of your butt and do something with your life. I know it hurts. I know the excuses are there. I know the pain is justified. I know you are hurting. I know there is real issues right there. I know that I don't understand your problem. I know I haven't walked in your shoes. I know that I don't know your journey, but I do know that my God is bigger than all things that we can ever face because Jesus already overcame what is trying to overcome us. And I do know that if he did it for me, he can do it for you. I'm looking somebody in the face right now, and I'm speaking by the Holy Spirit. There is somebody right now on here who has been sitting in their pain for far too long. And God is saying, if you will just steward this seed season and trust me if you will just steward this season and trust me I will bring forth a harvest that you couldn't imagine well Alyssa that's real easy for you to say that's you know you can look in the camera and say that to anybody no I can look in the camera and say that because honey I've been there I've done that When I was on all the food stamps, when I was on all of the stuff, when I was on all of the things, when I was going from food bank to food bank, when I couldn't put food on the table for my kids, when I couldn't make a way financially for my children, I was a single mom, my husband had walked out for another woman, when my ministry had fallen apart, when I was raped as a teenager and I was trying to commit suicide, when I was dealing with anorexia and bulimia because I couldn't stand looking at myself in the mirror, when I was dealing with self-hatred, when I didn't know how to face people, when I didn't know why God had given me purpose, when I felt like I was such a massive mess up, I still made the decision to steward my season because I believe that God's word was more true than my feelings. And that's why I can look you in the face right now and say, stop giving up on yourself. 
You are the only one that can make a decision to steward this season. You are the only one who can say, life might have dealt me a horrible hand. You are the only one who can say, life sucks right now. I am in pain. I am hurting. My heart is in turmoil. My mind is uneasy. I'm not able to rest. But you know what? God is here. Even in the midst of it, even in the midst of the divorce, even in the midst of the rape, even in the midst of the pain, even in the midst of rejection, somebody on here has been rejected by family and you've asked yourself, how can I be for me when my own family is against me? Can I tell you that is a lie from Satan to get you to give up on yourself so that you can abort the destiny and the call of God on your life before it ever comes to pass. You make the decision to steward the life inside of you. You make the decision to move forward. You make the decision to get up and do something with your life. Nobody, no circumstance, no issue, no thing, no problem, no area in your life can stop you from being who it is God has called you to be. You are the circumstance that makes the determination of what it is your life does in it for the Father. You are. You're the determining factor. Nobody else. You. And when I finally decided that my rapist isn't going to keep me in pain, when I finally decided that my my divorce isn't going to keep me stuck, when I finally decided that my eating disorder is not going to continue to kill me, when I finally decided to steward my season because I realized that seeds are being planted and harvests are growing, it can be a harvest that is choking out my destiny and it can be a harvest that is taking me towards my destiny. But it's my decision. And I want to look somebody in the face this morning and say, stop giving people, circumstances, situations, um, painful places, power over your destiny. Stop giving people power over your promise. Stop giving people power over the thing that God has called you to do. I gave up on myself and guess what? I got up and I tried again. And can I tell you, I fell down over and over and over and over again, but I continued to get up and get up and get up. Can I tell you, God is not looking for someone who's perfect. He's looking for someone who will give him progress. Your dirt does not disqualify you from the thing God has for your life. Can I go ahead and squash the lies that the church has tried to feed us? Can I go ahead and squash the lie that is trying to defeat you right now in your brain? Can I go ahead and squash the lie that your parents have spoke over you and your pastor has spoke over you and the spiritual leaders in your life who tried to speak truth, but they were speaking by um, false narratives that the things in your life are keeping you from God and his love? Honey, that is not true. God's love covers a multitude of sins. His grace is enough. His grace is sufficient to carry us through the dirt, to carry us through the dirty areas, to take us through the painful moments, to build a beautiful place out of a broken place. Can I tell you right now that you are not the issue? You are not the issue. You are the answer. Share this right now. Share it right now. People need to hear this. You are not the issue. You are the answer. You are the answer. But you've been believing these lies for so long that something is wrong with you. Things keep falling apart. Things keep happening to you. People keep dying. Everything I touch is toxic. I don't know what's wrong with me. I keep breaking up friendships. People keep telling me that I'm wrong. I keep trying and I keep falling down. I don't understand what's wrong with me. I must be the issue. No, honey, you're not the issue. You're the answer. I don't care if you don't feel like you're the answer. We are not moved by what we see, feel, or hear. We are moved by the word of God. I don't care what you feel. Feelings aren't fact. Feelings are fickle. 
You can feel one way today and you can feel a completely different way tomorrow. You can't go by what you feel, guys. You can't go by what you feel. You've got to go by what the word of God says. If we are moved by what we feel, we will be up one day and we will be down the next. If we are be, if we are moved by what we feel, then we can be up for God one day and down for him the next. If we are moved by what we feel, then we can be suicidal today and all about God tomorrow and all about life tomorrow. We are not moved by what we feel. I don't, it's not that I don't care about you. It's that your feelings lie to you too much. You cannot allow your feelings to determine where it is you go for God. Your feelings have got to be put on the back burner and you've got to say, if God said it, I believe it. That settles it. I'm not allowing my feelings to sway me one way or another. My feelings are fickle. They are not fact. They do not stay steady. I am going to stand on what's steady and that is the word of God. My feelings are not steady, so I'm not going to be moved by that. The word says that I am the answer. I have the power. I am able to do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's not in my own strength. And you may be sitting here saying, Alyssa, I don't have any strength to give. I don't know what to do. I, I, I can't even get out of bed. Can I tell you what I told myself? There were moments, there was a season in my life where I couldn't even get out of bed especially when I was going through divorce, but I've gone through many moments where I felt like I couldn't even get out of bed. And I felt like God was requiring me to get out of bed and get dressed and put my makeup on and do my hair and to be this great grand woman of faith and to show all of my strength and to be this, I don't know, just this, I've got it all together person. And what that did was made me wear a mask. What that did was require me to be plastic. And if you're plastic, then you don't deal with pain. If you're plastic and you're wearing a mask, then you're not walking in purpose. What I realized was that God wasn't requiring me to be um, masked and be walking in perfection in order to prove my faith. What I realized is that God was calling me to trust him in my moments of weakness because the word says that in my weakness, I'm made strong because of him. And so when I was laid up in bed and I felt like the way that I needed to prove my faith was to get up and put on this fake plastic mask of joy, God said, I'm not requiring that of you. What I want you to do today is just open your eyes. Yesterday, you slept all day. Yesterday, you couldn't even wake up because you were so depressed. Today, I'm just asking you to open your eyes. Tomorrow, I'm going to ask you to sit up. The next day, I'm going to ask you to put your feet on the ground and get out of bed. The next day, I might ask you to take a shower. It, it, it's the, the lie that God is requiring us to do so much at once. When God's saying, I just want you to show up today. I'm not asking you to be showy. I'm asking you to show up. I'm not asking you to be this perfect person. I'm asking you to put the mask down and show me who you truly are. So many of you have been lied to that, <laughs> that you're the issue, that God is mad at you, that he's angry at you because of the things you've done and the things that you're struggling to overcome. And, and, and the issue isn't you. You're the answer. The lie will come to tell you that you are the issue to keep you from stewarding your season correctly so that a harvest won't come forth from it. And so I just want to encourage you today to switch your mindset. I want you to type in the thing below right now. Put your hand on your heart. Do something, but say it out loud and say, I am not the issue. I am the answer. The lie that people have tried to speak over me, that I'm the one that has messed my life up, that I'm the one that has screwed things up. Listen, there are choices you will make. There are things that you have done, possibly. There are things that I did, that I had to pay consequences for. Sin is its own punishment. When you operate in sin, there are consequences for sin. But can I tell you, you don't have to sit in the consequences. You can operate in the call of God for your life. By making the decision that I might have screwed up, 
And I might have created some issues for myself, but I can stand up in the call that God has created for me because I'm not the issue. I'm the answer. I might have created some issues, but I'm not the issue. I might have created some circumstances, but I'm not the issue. I am the answer to get up right now and to do something about it. I am the answer to get up right now and do something with my life at this moment. Nobody's going to force me. Nobody can do it for me. Nobody can do it for me. Your season is not the issue. Your season is not the issue. The ability to steward the seed is what you need to focus on. Many of you have been sitting in a season for a long time now, and you feel like it's a season that is brought forth nothing but death and turmoil and hurt and pain and chaos. Your season isn't the issue. Your ability to steward the seed correctly is what's going to bring forth a harvest. So what are you doing right now? That's what I want to encourage you with. What are you doing right now to bring forth a harvest that is going to change what it is that you're seeing in your life? If you've got cycles in your life that are repeating, can I tell you it takes a seed to stop the cycles? And I'm just going to say something and uh, excuse me while I throw a glass in the air to say it's unfiltered. So if you're easily offended, you might jump off right now because um, this is truth. You ready for a truth bomb? Put it down below. Say I'm ready. Put it down below. Say I'm ready. Some of you have been facing cycles in your life that keep repeating cycles of abuse, cycles of hurt, cycles of turmoil. You keep on attracting people that are constantly hurting you and rejecting you and abandoning you and you're constantly abandoning you and you're constantly feeling like it's a constant cycle. Why do these things keep on happening? Why do I keep finding myself in these situations, these scenarios? I don't understand it. Cycles are stopped with seeds. The moment that a woman knows she's pregnant is because her cycle has stopped. Her cycle has stopped because a seed was planted. And if you're wondering why cycles keep repeating in your life, it's not the season that's the issue. It's your ability to steward the seed. It's your ability to steward the seed correctly. What seeds are you planting in your life? Are they words of death? Are they words of anger? Are they feelings of bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness? Are are they constant belief systems that you have rooted yourself in, that you are the issue, that you are the problem, that you're never going to have the life that you needed, that you're never going to see God do anything great in your life, that all of the things he's spoken over you will never come to pass? What kind of seeds are you cultivating in your life? Maybe it's time for you to start digging up some stuff. When, when somebody wants to have a garden that is successful, they've got to go out there. My mother in love, she's always in her garden. She's always digging. She's always pulling weeds. She's always stirring up the dirt. The dirt in your life is not bad. The things in your life that you think bring you, make you filthy are not bad. The things in your life that are dirty can bring forth life because they help you cultivate seeds. And so I want to encourage you today, maybe it's time to start digging some things up. If you're seeing yourself repeating cycles, maybe it's not the season, maybe it's the seed that you need to dig up. Seeds stop cycles in your life. And I just want to read you real quickly from my book, Unfiltered, if you haven't gotten a hold of it. Unfiltered, Walking Through Dirt While Embracing Your Destiny. You can get it on Kindle and Amazon. I want to read you real quick. Um, I, I start this chapter out. Chapter 2, Dig. I started out talking about how God was preparing me for a season to dig some things out of my life before I ever knew that that year divorce was going to be in the lineup for my year. I had no idea that I would be facing divorce after 10 years of marriage and two baby girls, but there I was. And I talk about the importance of learning how to dig. Listen to this. Little did I know God was preparing me for the clock to strike midnight and promise would be a process 
I'd have to walk out. Listen, promise is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Stop expecting God to make it happen tomorrow. And then when it doesn't happen tomorrow, you're angry at God. Promise is a process. When you get pregnant, it's nine months of a process for that thing to grow before it can be birthed. Listen to this. I had no idea at the time, but over the next year of my life, I would become painfully aware of the fact that promise is a posture and not a position. Position is defined a place where someone or something is located or has been put. Sometimes we think that promise is a place that God puts us. That I'm not seeing promise right now because I've not been placed in that position yet. I don't see promise in my life because I don't see that thing right now. I don't see me standing on that stage or I don't see me owning that business or I don't see me married to that person or I don't see my family perfect or I don't see this thing in my life lining up. I'm not at promise yet because I've not been placed in a position. Promise is not a position, it's a posture. Posture is defined the position in which someone holds their body when standing or sitting. A particular way of dealing with or considering something, an approach or an attitude. That's what promise is. Listen, what if I told you, I'm reading from my book Unfiltered. What if I told you that anyone can steal your position from you, but no one can keep you from posturing yourself correctly? What if I told you that promise is yours as long as you choose it? It's not something you can lose and it's not something that can be stolen from you. Your promise, your destiny, your dream, calling, vision, whatever you choose to name it, is 100% dependent upon your ability to posture yourself correctly and move toward your goal. It's a posture. Well, listen, I don't see the things happening in my life. I keep seeing cycles repeat. Well, how are you posturing yourself? Promise is not a position. It's not, oh, I finally arrived. I'm finally here. It's a posture that you continually set yourself towards. It's your ability to move forward even when you've got friction in your life. Friction is good, people. Friction is good. Without friction, tires couldn't move the car forward. Without friction on the ground, there would be no movement. You couldn't move forward. You're looking at the friction in your life and you're saying, man, I don't understand this thing. I don't understand why these things keep happening. I don't understand why God's allowing this. Friction allows you to move forward. God allows friction. He allows dirt. He allows obstacles so that you can move forward. The problem is, have you made the decision? I'm not the issue. I'm the answer. Say that again. I'm not the issue. I'm the answer. The season that I'm in right now is not the issue. My ability to steward the seed correctly and posture myself correctly is the answer. A friend once said, you'll always remain in the same place if you never take a step forward. I found the same concept can be applied here too. Listen to this. Digging requires a certain amount of work, strength, consistency, and endurance. But the one thing weighing heavily towards its success is your posture. You can dig until your hands form blisters and sweat soaks through your shirt, but if you haven't maintained the right posture, you won't last long. It may seem like may not seem like a big deal to you, but if it's not your priority, it will become your pain. My great-grandparents were farmers, and one of the lessons I remember is my grandma teaching me the importance behind how you hold a shovel and what your posture looks like. I can still hear, hear her words. If you dig wrong, then, you're, then you'll wear out fast. What I learned the hard way was that correct posture not only helps your endurance, but it also keeps you from injuring what allows you to get the job done, and that's your back. I don't know where you're at in life right now, and I don't know why you picked up this book or why you came on my live feed to listen to me read this, but maybe you've had wreckage around you for a long time. Listen to me. Maybe you're just now seeing the effects of chaos in your life. Or maybe you've lived with it for so long you don't even recognize it anymore. Wherever you are, I want you to understand today that promise is yours. But to find the gold, you have to be willing to dig through the dirt behind the pain. So I want to encourage you today, in order to find promise, in order to see life grow, you have to be willing to dig 
through the dirt of your life. You have to be willing to dig through the lies, to dig through the issues, to dig through the things that tell you you can't, to dig through the things that people have spoken over you for so long. Dig through the issues, dig through the circumstances, dig through the things that you couldn't even help, things that were done to you that you didn't choose. In order to find promise, in order to find gold, you have to be willing to dig. And to dig, you have to maintain the right posture. Promise isn't a position. It's not a place you just show up and arrive at. It's a posture you maintain. And if you don't maintain a posture of God, I don't understand why this is going on in my life. I don't understand why this keeps happening. I don't understand why I'm hurting so bad, but I'm going to posture myself to get back up and try again tomorrow. I'm going to posture myself to know I am not the issue. I am the answer to moving forward. I'm going to posture myself to realizing that friction creates movement. I am moving forward. I may be feeling the friction in my life, but I'm moving forward. I'm not making a decision to allow it to hold me back. I'm going to to help this help me I'm going to understand that my season is not the issue my ability to cultivate the seeds that I am planting in my mind my belief system my thought process what am I believing about myself that's what's going to grow in my life I'm not going to allow the lies to continue to choke out my destiny. I'm not going to allow the people who have hurt me to continue to keep me from moving forward because I can't move past the pain. I've made a bed out of that brokenness and I've laid there for so long and I don't know what to do. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm getting up and I'm taking those broken pieces and I'm building with them again. I'm doing something with my life. I love you guys. I hope this encouraged you. I hope that you take this and you share it. You tag somebody in it down below that needs to hear it. I hope that you replay it. I hope that you speak it over yourself. I am not the issue. I am the answer. I hope this weekend you challenge yourself to get up. I hope today that you believe in yourself again. I pray, Father, that you would speak hope and truth and life and a breath of fresh air in every person who watches this live feed, who is on here right now, Father, that they would know they are the answer and not the issue. That they would know that their dirt does not define them. It actually qualifies them for doing the thing you've called them to do. That their dirt had destiny written in it before they ever had a chance to be dirty. I mean, before they ever had a chance to be clean and before they ever took a day to be dirty in their life, it still had destiny written in it. Father, I pray that you give them new hope, new desires, clarity and how to let go. The ability to forgive the ability to forgive themselves, the, the ability to forgive others, the ability to let go of the past so that they can move forward. Father, let them not constantly regret their yesterdays by keeping them in today without being able to move forward to tomorrow. Father, I pray that you would give them strength. I pray that you would give them rest, that they could sleep peacefully knowing that you are not angry at them, that your grace is sufficient, that you have called them, that you have qualified them. That you're not asking them to be showy, you're asking them to show up. <laughs> that they will understand that you've already given them the tools to be everything that you've called them to be. And I pray that there today would be challenged to move forward. Not to be held back by all of the hurts and pains anymore, God, but that you would begin to heal the broken places, the hurtful places, the painful places. The places that are justified, the places that are wounded, the places that they have a right to be mad as hell. But don't allow that hell, Father, to keep them mad, to keep them from moving forward in the things that you've called them to do, God. And so I thank you right now that you are helping them find the will to take one step in front of the other. In Jesus' name. I hope that this encouraged you. Please share this. Please tag somebody down below that needs it. If you need a quarantine read, if you just need something to help you get through the dirt in your life, you know you can always go catch my book, Unfiltered, Walking Through Dirt While Embracing Your Destiny. If you want a signed copy, you can get it off of our website. Kindle has it. Amazon has it. Um, all of my links are on here. If this bless you, I don't normally ask, but um, all of our income has stopped. So this is what we do. We do our ministry online now. If you'd like to sow a seed, 
into our ministry and these live chats have been blessing you can always do that on cash app at the Alyssa holt um it is on my post um it helps me with my family it helps me put food on the table um and uh I hope that you guys will be blessed. Go subscribe to my podcast, Unfiltered by Alyssa Holt, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, all of the stuff. I put out a new podcast every Tuesday. Go check it out. I'm on here Wednesdays and Fridays with you guys, 1030 a.m. to encourage you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Raise a glass to the dirt in your life. It is worth celebrating. Destiny is there. No seeds can grow without dirt. Um... And I will see you guys Wednesday, okay? Love you guys. Have a great 4th of July weekend. Celebrate with your family. Have a great time. Be safe with the fireworks. Um, Maybe get some sun. Get some water time. And I will see you guys soon. I see Ashton here. I love you, girl. Um, Okay. Well, be blessed, guys. Um, Oh, and don't forget, I started a new page called Corin Scene. Corin scene. Go like it. Go be a part of this community. God started a private project with just me um, that I started a month ago. And it's where God told me to not get so caught up in the undertow of movements. I am for movements. I am for change in our nation. I am for change in our communities and um, humanity. But the way that life has been and everything there has been this this thing where I've been caught up so much in the undertow of movements and even the unprecedented times of our nation right now with COVID and quarantine and all this that I'm missing moments. And so every day I started a private project in my phone, in my notes section, I was taking pictures, one picture a day of a moment scene that I wanted to remember. And I've been logging it in my notes every day, one picture a day of a moment scene. It could be the freckles on my daughter's face. It could be their little feet. It could be um, a day at the beach. It could be a meal that my family loved. Whatever it is, a moment scene, just to not get so caught up in just seeing the movements that I don't see the moments. I created a page called Corn Scene. If you want to be a part of that, just to spread some hope and light, come join it, like it. Share your moment scene with us. People are posting pictures great pictures of moment scene go to the community side to see all the pictures it's great so go check that out now i love you guys be blessed i will see you guys um wednesday have a great weekend love you guys be encouraged do something different than you did yesterday